This is Five on Your Side at Five, focused on you. It's a warm but cloudy day around the Bi-State. Our Weather First team is also tracking some showers over the next few days. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Kelly Jackson. And I'm Ann Allred. Mike Bush has the night off. We will continue to see some showers through the holiday weekend, along with some highs in the 60s. Let's yeah. check in with meteorologist Jim Castillo. Yeah, you know, today's high was 62. We've fallen back into the uh, 50s, but still very mild, even lows tonight in the mid 40s. And the weather first Doppler radar is showing some rain that's been pushing through Gasconade County, Phelps County, Crawford County, and now into Franklin County. So Sullivan getting a little bit of rain right now. It's moving into some drier air, so a lot of this is falling apart. Uh, some of it definitely reaching the ground from Gerald through Sullivan and also down to Cuba. And so we'll watch for our first batch of showers. Here's system number one, and it's just to the west of us. So out ahead of it is that little batch of rain right there. And then we'll have more moving in as we get into the overnight hours tonight. Uh, system number two, by the way, arrives late Sunday, Christmas Eve and into Monday. Uh, more on that coming up in Maine weather. But the future cast for the overnight hours and into tomorrow morning, rain at times and probably a quarter of an inch, maybe a little bit more with this first system. I'll time out the next system and how much rain will come with that coming up in just a bit. New at five for the first time in years, we're being given a look at the operations inside of the St. Louis Police Department's real time crime center. Five in your size Holden Kerwicki was part of today's demonstration. He joins us from the newsroom with more details Holden on why the department is finally opening up the doors. Well, Kellyanne, there have been dis plenty of discussions among city leaders about what the information taken in by St. Louis Metro Police is actually used for. But after leading to more than 600 arrests and 430 stolen cars recovered this year, police say that answer is simple. After working in St. Louis Metropolitan Police Department's real time crime center since 2015, Detective Chris Gwaltney is passionate about the work done inside this room. It is the epicenter of a lot of investi investigations. Um, it is utilized by, I would say, almost every single officer that we have. At any given time, these screens give SLMPD detectives access to more than 2,300 cameras, both public and private, scattered across the city, along with 375 license plate readers. They are consistently being used 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Though the department has the ability to access any of these cameras in real time. They're not actively monitored 24 seven. Detective Gwaltney says that's in part due to limited staffing. We, we only usually have you know, anywhere from one to four detectives at very most in that room. However, every frame of video is stored digitally for 30 days, so detectives can look back in time as part of any investigation. They will always assist on the back end investigation, whether the manpower is there or not. You know, we can always review that footage at a later date. That information is used in nearly every homicide, robbery, or carjacking in the city of St. Louis which is why Detective Gwaltney says he would like to see more cameras installed citywide. They provide a, um, a force multiplier, especially when you deal with the decreasing number of police officers on the streets. It allows a little extra assistance uh, with the technology. With that in mind, I asked how that would translate into safer streets in a department that continues to rely on manpower instead of assistance from AI. Uh, I believe that it will continue to develop as technology develops, as all things develop and grow. Uh, hopefully, uh, it will provide additional security and solvability to some of these otherwise unsolvable crimes. Anyone in the city of St. Louis with exterior security cameras can sign up to have their feed provided directly to the Real Time Crime Center. For more information, just go to KSDK.com and look for this story under the As Seen on TV tab. Kelly. All right, thanks, Holden. A blue mail collection box inside St. Louis was left wide open. Now people in the area are concerned about mail security. Five in your side's Diamond Palmer is looking into the problem and is live outside the U.S. Postal Service downtown. Diamond. Good evening, Ann and Kelly. That's right. Neighbors in the Hill neighborhood tell me that the blue mail collection box at the corner of Wilson and Sublet Avenue was left wide open this week, and now they're worried their mail won't make it to their destination. Barb Judici gave us permission to use this photo on your screen. You see here, which shows the mailbox in front of her home completely open. She says it's not the first time this has happened. Judici didn't want to speak on camera to us, but told us that she stopped using this particular blue mailbox after 
after she mailed a check for $28 and it was washed for $3,000 by thieves. The U.S. Postal Service says in the first half of 2023, there were 25,000 mail theft incidents. Residents in the Hill say they have distrust when it comes to using these blue mailboxes. And the Postal Police Officers Association says when the boxes are left open, it puts people's personal information at risk. But I, I don't send anything through the mail. I do it tech, uh, with tech at the bank. I just don't mail checks uh, because I know about that now. Most likely, uh, some criminal has the arrow key to that box. And they stole mail. And they left it open. I mean, that's basically what happened. So whoever mailed a letter in that box, um, it's gone now. And I have reached out to the U.S. Postal Service for comment as to why this blue mailbox was left open. And they've referred me to their inspection service and said that service would reach out to us with any information they had. At this point in time, we are still waiting on their response. Reporting live downtown, Diamond Palmer, 5 on your side. Support is on the way for displaced workers at the Northview Village Nursing Home in St. Louis. The facility abruptly closed last week and now job fairs and funding have been set up. Justina Cornell joins us in studio with the tales of the help available. Yeah, so last Friday, more than 180 workers realized something was wrong when they didn't get paid. Soon they learned Northview Village was shutting down and 170 residents were forced to move and those employees are now without a job. That's when multiple elected officials and organizers in the area set up a fund for that staff. Now the facility is in Alderwoman Sharon Tyus's ward and she donated $5,000 of her own money to assist. Now also helping is the St. Louis Agency on Training and Employment known as Slate. The job center is hosting two emergency job fairs. At least 15 employees are expected to be there. Now the first event is tomorrow and that very first hour is solely open for former Northview employees. I spoke to Slate's executive assistant who said they've handed out information to staff for next steps. They're hurt. They're, very, they're hurt. They're, they're trying to figure out what's next. But as far as it goes, when we came out there, had those conversations and let them know that we are there for support. Uh, they were they're very, very hopeful. You know, and it made them happy and they were excited to be able to come to the job fair to see see what's next for their opportunities. Now, tomorrow's job fair will take place from 9 to 12. For more information on the job fairs or ways to donate, you can head to our website, case2k.com, and go to the section as seen on TV. Let's take a live look tonight at St. Louis Lambert International Airport. The TSA expects about 35,000 people to go through the airport over the next two days. The busiest days are today, tomorrow, and the day after Christmas. And here's a little tip. The least busy day to travel is Sunday on Christmas Eve. AAA expects about 115 million people to travel between Saturday and New Year's Day, and most of those will be driving. Now, if you want to avoid a big traffic jam, the best time to drive is before noon. Most of the traffic will be in the afternoon and evening. And if you're one of the many people driving, you can find some of the cheapest gas prices in our area by texting the word gas to 314-425-5355. As the number of deaths grow in Gaza, Hamas says it's done with negotiations to release hostages. The reason behind that decision. Virus season is here. The trend health experts are noticing with the flu, COVID, and RSV. Questions after a police SUV crashes into a South St. Louis bar. Tonight, we're pressing police to answer them. 